Okay, so we go to Shulchan Aruch, and we are on page number 40. At least in my book, I'm not sure if it's book, so it, uh, in a CF number 16. <clears throat> and uh, we continue Sima number 5, and subject uh, of the Sima laws pertaining to cleanliness. Okay, so now a little uh, different subject. I mean, the su subject is the same, but uh, a little different halacha. <clears throat> In addition to actual erva, a man may not recite Torah or, uh, or prayer in the presence uh, of that which can bring to improper thoughts, as delineated in this CF. Okay, so just one second. So last time we said uh, erva, we said somebody is not dressed, and that's. Uh, that's uh, erva, and even uh, children, like uh, above certain age. Okay. So number sixty-five comes in the Mishnah Brura. However, um, with regard to this type of erva, there are authorities who do not require that uh, he turns entire body, as long as his eyes are closed, and he does not see the erva. Uh, in a case where one uh, cannot uh, turn his body, he may rely on this opinion. So as we were discussing, I'm not sure in this class, but I remember, or in, or in, um, <clears throat> in uh, Laws of Shabbos class, so we said uh, that sometimes you're in that situation, so you have these guests, probably in, in the Shabbos class, at your table, and uh, a woman came, and she's not exactly dressed, and it's summer, it's hot, and... Uh, <clears throat> So basically, the, the proper way is to turn all your body, like uh, sideways, or to to, to to cover yourself with a seat or with a bench or whatever, like uh, raise a little higher so you can uh, you hide your face. But uh, <clears throat> is all of this is not going to work. So they say you you you, you can close your eyes. So basically, <laughs> in this case, you you must know the 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 kiddush by heart. Okay, so let's see. Regarding the body of the woman, any place of her body that is usually covered, if a tefach of this uh, of it is exposed, uh, and unlike her hair, and 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 likewise, and likewise the hair of the varied woman, which is usually covered, if some of the uh, hair is exposed, the area, uh, this area, are considered erva for for a man. Okay. So let's go from uh, from the beginning, and there are many commentaries. We try to explain. So we're going to go <clears throat> line by line. It says uh, regarding the body of a woman, any place of her body that is usually covered. Sixty six. The halacha uh, as to what is deemed erva is left uh, uh, is left uncovered. Various with the prevalent customs of a woman in the area. Uh, with regard to her face, hands, and elbows, and uh, and legs, up to the knee. All other parts of the woman's body are considered erva, even if the woman in that uh, area dress modestly, and leave those parts of the body uncovered, immodestly, I'm sorry, immodestly. So from, from here we see it doesn't matter how people around uh, us dress, so the law is uh, considered to be the same. So the only difference is they say um, that depends on a custom in the area. Uh, for example, if the, um, the length of the skirt for a woman. So the halacha is that it, it has to cover the knee while the woman sits. Uh, some, some women have uh, a little longer uh, skirt. So up up to the ankle, so that's their tradition. That's what they do. Baruch Hashem. That's the most uh, commendable custom. But some of them uh, have a little uh, higher. So, but uh, this custom and that custom they go according to halacha. There is no problem, right? Then, um, um, then then we have hands. So there is some custom up to the wrist. But uh, basically, up to the elbow, there is uh, if elbow is covered, there is another custom. There is no problem, right? And uh, what was it? Uh, 
face will it the face one just one second okay okay so basically so one, one more time that doesn't matter how women dress around that's not it doesn't make any difference so that, okay that's uh, okay so places that are usually covered for according to halacha should be always covered okay so next uh, if a tefach of it is exposed right of these places that are usually covered 67 so tefach is between uh, 3.2 and 3.8 uh, inches so it's a feast my tefach according to rama any amount of the uh, of the unusual exposure over you over by a woman who is not the wife of that man is considered erva so that's actually the halacha that we follow we follow the in this uh, thing right so any like even a quarter of an inch or one sixteenth of an inch the skirt it uh, it makes the whole difference or a sleeve however with regard to the minimal amount um, it is sufficient to close one's eyes so as we said so so here's the leniency so if uh, so basically some since some of them some of the authorities say it's uh, up, up to the tefach which is a lot <laughs> as we understand and uh, no at all so between this and that opinion so he can close the eyes not uh, is not required to, to turn he or completely his body according to some authorities the exposure of any part of the leg above and including the knee is erva so that's what we actually also abide by even if it is less than a tefach so wherever a knee knee itself and above the knee for sure not good so and uh, as we said uh, in a sitting position not in a standing <coughs> So one more time the whole sentence regarding the body of the woman in play uh, any place of her body that is usually covered if a tech uh, of it is exposed and not uh, and likewise the hair of the married woman which which is usually ha covered okay so let's uh, read the commentary and explain the hair the hair of the married woman is always uh, considered erva regardless of the custom of the local woman so they can go without uh, whatever the, the way they want doesn't make any difference for Jews since the halacha demands that it is covered Mishnah Bruna, with regard to to this erva it is sufficient to close one eyes so basically okay so it's another leniency of course uh, if needed we can realize uh, somebody came for, to your house and uh, you need to pray you need to say blessing and uh, um, and you you cannot turn away so I mean there are situations like that so you can uh, rely on this opinion and basically just close your eyes and you can say the blessing so okay so okay these are considered erva for a man okay for a man um, Commentary 69. According to Rabbi Moshe Fine, since that's all, it is prohibited to pray uh, when facing a married woman's uncovered hair only if the uncovered area is larger than tefach. Um, okay, we're going to explain. This leniency apply only to hair. Uh, regarding um, other parts of the body, that is con uh, that consider erva it is forbidden to pray when face of uh, face with even slightest exposure igras moshe or achaim okay so so what what it says here um so ramosha finds that uh, that's all says that uh, so women can expose some hair so as uh, if if you saw some um, um, i think more Mostly Israelis, when when they they uh, when they uh, wear this kisui rosh, some some of them, not not all, some of them, they they would uh, show hair, right? Not not completely cover. So, but um, I, I don't think they would show like uh, three inches. That's too much. It's like half of the head. So, but uh, I think it says that uh, two or three, three fingers, and right, that they can show. So basically, okay. If if they if they need to show for whatever reason they can show but uh, preferably not to show. Okay. And um, one more time, this leniency. So, if uh, 
if it is uh, uncovered, so that is three, three fingers, two fingers, <clears throat> and according to Rob Moshe Fines and even uh, the Stefach, so he can uh, just close his eyes and pray. Okay. But all other uh, parts, of, parts of the body, according to Reb Moshe, so it's uh, even slightest exposure, so he cannot uh, pray uh, facing that. So basically that's uh, that's the um, requirement of, of Mihitsa, right? So separation between men and women. Okay, continue. There is no difference with regard to the Halacha of Pharaoh between his own wife and another woman. So, okay. So commentary number seven, 70 and we explain. Or between married and unmarried woman, except with rega regard to, to, her, to, to the hair, which is considered erva only if the married, uh, for a married woman. Which number one. So basically, so if uh, if woman is not married, so she is not uh, she is not required to to cover her hair, even though she can if she want to, but there is no no such requirement. Okay. All right. So what else? Uh, but but otherwise it do doesn't matter. So uh, as we said, so the bottom line, it doesn't matter. It's his own wife or not his own wife. It's uh, um, so. But if if his own wife shows, so she's at home and she's not. Uh, so she's not obligated to cover her hair all the time. I mean, uh, only her husband. Husband has a right to to see her hair. But uh, so if he's not if he's not framed, there is no problem whatsoever, right? So the only problem when he needs to say Birchas Hamazon or prayer, or say blessings and stuff like that. Okay, continue. However, these areas are not considered erva to another woman. Okay, so okay, that's very very important thing. So it's only for for a man, but not for another woman. So another woman. Uh, may see one woman can see another woman not dressed not properly dressed and it's not going to, going to consider her commentary 71 it should be noted that uh, the halachas in this section deals only with that is considered erva with regard to permissibility of recited sacred text uh, in their presence however even if something uh, is not erva with regard to these halachas it is not necessarily a modest uh, mode of dress hmm. uh, for a woman, uh, for a uh, for woman, nor uh, a man uh, allow is n nor a man, no, no, nor may a man allow himself to gaze upon her, upon upon it. So uh, even though it may be like uh, as we said, maybe it's not erva, whatever it's uh, or, uh, borderline erva, not erva. So a man should not gaze. So men must watch their eyes. So but it's different halacha, but they just mention it here. Okay. And anyway, the woman must be modest, as modest as possible. <clears throat> so the, the clothes also cannot be tight. So even though it's not airway, it's like a cover, but still it's not cover, so it's not modest. Right. So continue. The voice of the woman singing is also considered erva. Uh, commentary 72. There is one should not uh, engage in sacred text in the same time as he hears the voice of the woman singing. Right? That's, uh, that's the problem. Okay, for example, uh, the, uh, I don't know, like um, on, a, on a speaker somewhere, right? He's in some... Uh, in some building can uh, like public building and uh, there is a there is a woman's uh, singing on the radio that's the problem nevertheless in a present situation uh, for example when he one hears a woman singing one uh, uh, and and he cannot stop them he should not refrain from saying shema or prayer or studying torah due to this singing so so an example would be like uh, um so somebody is working maybe in the hotel and there's like lobby music and stuff like that and there is no way for him to get out i mean that's his job or he's in a restaurant or maybe semi-kosher restaurant i don't know maybe the food is kosher but the environment is not kosher so they, they would play uh um women uh recordings 
so and he has no choice so i mean he can listen but uh but try to concentrate not to, on on the words not to, on on her singing rather he should make a strong effort to direct his entire attention to the holy matter in which he is engaged and not pay any attention to her okay